in You never leave a witness when you do a man Even back then, never was a pack, man Bout to roll up the yogi in a pack, man Drop a hop and get a shipment of the pack, man You never leave a With the suspect or with the victim? Shooter shells, set run those who was on the drill scene in Chicago died at an early age of 21. Shells is now featured on Final Hours, Fuse with Green Light. Shells was a well known member of Black Mob, which are Black P Stones, located on 74th and 75th in Phillips. Black Mob is a very ruthless gang. Black Mob used to be allied with ABK while at war with NLMB. Now, ABK is clicked up with NLMB and at war with Black Mob. NLMB is a gang found on the east side of Chicago. NL stands for No Limit. NMB stands for Muskegon Boys. NLMB has two members on the rap scene, Lil Herb and Lil Bibby, to name a few. NLMB has never leave my brothers. So okay, I'm finna take y'all down the block to 74th and 75th and Phillips on the east side of Chirac. Here is the story of Shooter Shells. San Rondo's 21 was a young inspired rapper on the south and east side of Chicago. San Ron was yet another popular figure whose presence was silenced in the wake of gun violence. Doles lived on the west side of the Humble Park neighborhood and earned some notoriety due to his dark lyrics that often dissed and taunted rival rappers and their dead homies. Among distant rival gangs, Shells sent a clear message to NLMBG Herbo in a diss track, Death of 150, where he signed and endorsed the song to Herb. Seron dropped Death of 150, which dissed a lot of NLMB lost members, including Fazo, Vito, Simo, Pistol Pete, GBE Capo, and Kobe. Shooter Shells released the track on the YouTube sensation Locker Entertainment. Growing up in Chicago was a challenge. Seron felt he always had to prove himself. When he was in elementary school, him and his crew would meet up with other rivals at different schools and fight. And as they got older, the fights turned into wars. Shells was released from prison and starts putting his rap lyrics to fine tune beats. He started buying beats so he could make his approach to the industry and compete with the ops. A family member told Shells to be careful that the streets is not safe and dissing the Ops is a daily game, and you don't want to stay logged in. Shells had a strong mind and always stayed positive. He never looked defeated. Said Ron had lost really close friends, yet he never cried or showed his emotions. He always held it in. Body artifacts, items we wear 
that are part of our physical appearance and have the potential to communicate for us. Although he never spoke about his pain much, he wore body artifacts that dissed rival gangs to get payback for the pain he is hiding inside. Most interactions are silent responses to pain that someone's withholding. Shooter Shells diss NLMB Kobe, aka Jacoby Herring, almost every track he rapped on. In 2013, NLMB Kobe was killed by a gang that is clicked up with Black Mob. That led to Shells dissing Kobe as much as he could. Kobe was killed on the 9 in front of McDonald's on 79th and Phillips. He was killed blocks away from his house. Kobe sported his favorite Nikes the night of his shooting. At the time of Kobe's death, NLMB was filming Welcome to Faisal Land a few blocks up the street. A month before Kobe died, NLMB Simo was killed. Simo Cortez Bailey was shot in the chest on 75th and Yates. He was taken to Northwestern Memorial where he died an hour later. After Shells killed Yogi, he dropped the diss track, Pac-Man, to further take aim at ABK Yogi, where he stated, rolling up Yogi in a Pac-Man, which is the diss track to smoking on ABK's dead homie. After the death of ABK Yogi, Shooter Shells was also tagged by the opposition for killing NLMB Richie Rich. Now by 2017, Shells is full time on his resume that the block tagged to his name. Message overload. The result, when sinners receive more messages than they can process, Shells was overloaded with death threats that he just ignored and shot back in his music. Said Rondos was a controversial rapper on Chicago's dark side. His ties to Black Mob earned him clout amongst the music scene. Before his death, he released a song called Death of 150, which dissed NLMB signature brand and talked about killing members of NLMB. After Shell's release, Death of 150, the feds opened an investigation into Black Mob, ABK, and NLMB, alongside Chicago Police Department. In Death of 150, Shell's had made a comment that warranted further investigation. Shell stated, Tell Rock, Kobe, and Faiso, you gonna see them soon. That threat referred to Jamal Harris, 19, killed in February of 2012, outside a liquor store 
that left another dead and five shot. Jacob Herring, 21, killed in August 2013, and Faison Robinson, he was 18 when he was killed in 2010 on the nine. Despite the backlash said Ron received from fans on his music, opposition was telling him to stand down in private and open DMs where he is told to stop dissing the dead. Shooter Shells repeatedly dissed the members he had allegedly assassinated. He repeatedly dissed the same members in Death of 150. Doe's 21 Shooter Shells is exiting a residence along with another on the 81st block of South Paulina. In the Auburn Grisham neighborhood. Shells begin to walk a block up the street as he parked over a hundred feet from his vehicle. Shells start to enter the car down the block toward 82nd Street. Three assailants approach Doe's from a white Nissan Altima and a gray Tahoe jumped out and started firing. Riddled with bullets, Doe's attempted to run but collapsed in front of a black vehicle. Doe's was shot over his upper body and was DOA on the side of the street. Units in 600 citywide, we got shots fired, person shot 8100 Polina, 81 in Polina, to 6th District Zone 8. Our units, we have a dark gray SUV, dark gray car pulling away. Dark gray SUV, dark car pulling away. No other information. Uh, 630, y'all. Several cases in the street, so tell everybody uh, be careful when they're walking up. All right, units on the scene, 8-1 in Polina. Watch where you walk, please. Okay, the vehicle at 937-CM-493 is parked at 8-141 Polina, and I'm, I didn't copy. How is it involved? That was the vehicle that was sideswiped by the offending vehicle that fled southbound on Polina. 610, whoever's on the 81st in Polina, stop that vehicle that's reversing. Whoever's on 81st and pulling to stop the car that's reversing, do you copy? This is my brief of tape, and I need this area because it's crowded. Yet. <laughs> so far, what we know of, we're looking for a gray Nissan and a gray Tahoe. No further info. Gray Nissan, gray Tahoe, gray Nissan, gray Tahoe from the uh, homicide, everybody. All right, and uh, can somebody tell me the approximate age of the victim? 21. Uh, distress. Please be careful on the scene. There's uh, shell cases everywhere. Be careful. Are you just watch where you step, please? Units over on the crime scene, 81st employee in a watch where you step, please. Are you 21? I don't want a name, but can somebody tell me black, white, or Hispanic male? Male black, 21. Chicago PD showed up minutes later to find Sarah Doe's deceased amongst being fired at 43 times. The FBI was then notified to assist Chicago PD in the gruesome slaying of shooter shells. Chicago PD reached into Doe's pocket to find the iPhone 7 Plus that was locked. In the recent years, the feds were focusing 
on Goonie Boss Faction and Milwaukee King Boys federal indictment, they fell behind on those case. As of December 2nd, 2019, the FBI has now begun its investigation into Doe's murder. The feds filed a motion to have Doe's phone unlocked by Apple. Witnesses have agreed to speak with FBI about what they witnessed on July 10th of 2017. An autopsy report laid out grim details. Doe's was shot in the face, head, chest, right arm, right thigh, right foot, right calf, both buttock, left forearm, and right wrist.